Hey card making friends, welcome back, it's Sandy here, and today I'm playing with washi tape, stencils, stamps, and dies. These sets are a new rage out there in the card making world, and I love them. However, they are a considerable investment, right? So do you get them and then wonder what to make with them? If so, keep watching because I've got eight card ideas to share with you created with the Pink Fresh Whimsical Blooms Bundle. The Whimsical Blooms Bundle starts with this beautiful washi tape, this awesome stamp set, and if you haven't noticed before, the stamps are all attached. So by not cutting them apart, then the coordinating dies cut them out perfectly, and there's a set of stencils. And we're going to be playing with all of these today. First off, you want to check your dies to see where the pattern lines up. And I have a large one at the bottom of my washi tape, so I'm just going to cut that off so that I get maximum volume out of placing this washi tape onto my piece of cardstock. I've cut a piece of cardstock in half. It's four and a quarter by 11 white, and I'm laying down my washi tape. And there's a little bit of room to fudge, even if you get it on there crooked like I just did. Don't worry. Softly rub so that you try and get it all on there without any wrinkles or tears. Cut off what you don't need and then you can further press it down. And I have a bit of a ripple down here in the corner, so I'm showing you that you can very gently peel it back so that you can straighten it out and get rid of those ripples. Perfect, just like that. So then we're ready to die cut. You're going to lay your die up on top and then attach it. Um, I'm using Spellbinders tape to attach mine. I really like this tape because it stays sticky for a really long time. It doesn't dry out like some of the other tapes do. So I like to attach it in a few different places and spending an extra couple of minutes lining it up will really, really help with the finished result. You won't have, you know, lopsided white edges on part of your uh, finished piece. Next, I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine with the new Universal Plate System. The A platform gives you a description for the sandwich. So it's an A platform, a B platform, the C cutting pad, the paper and the dies. And you'll notice that this set, the plates are longer than the regular ones were, which allows me to put this entire thing onto the cutting plate and cut it all at the same time. And this is also great for slimline cards. So I really like the new design and the length of this new platform. So we're going to run it through. And you only need to run it through once. Taking it off and I get one, two, three, four, five, six little bouquets out of one piece of washi tape and one run through the die cutting machine. Next, we're going to play with the stamps and I've already got them sitting on top of another four and a quarter by 11 piece of cardstock because hey, the dies fit, so you may as well cut them all at the same time. What I'm going to do with these is I'm going to gold emboss them and then we're going to stencil. Now for my Misty, you might notice it's a little bit bigger. I'm using my 12 by 12 scrapbooking Misty just because it gives me lots of room to use all of these stamps. I have a really hard time putting it in my smaller Misty. So I'm using the rabbit right now to uh, get rid of, of any anti-static or fingerprints. And I'm going to be stamping with my Versamark ink pad so that we can do some embossing. And don't you just love my Grinch t-shirt? <laughs> It was cold the day that I was taping this, and this t-shirt's nice and warm. I didn't realize when I was videoing it that I leaned forward so many times and gave you the hairy eyeball from the Grinch. <laughs> okay, so giving it a good rub so I get a really, really good stamped image with all these pretty stamps. I'm also going to press into the center because I sometimes that round thing doesn't quite get into it for you especially when you've got a large surface that you're stamping. Okay, so I'm going to pull it out of there. I like to close my Misty so that I don't get a whole bunch of embossing powder inside it because it's kind of hard to get rid of. It's kind of like glitter. It goes everywhere. And I'm covering it with my gold embossing powder. And this is uh, Simon Says Stamps Detailed Gold Embossing Powder. I really like it. Okay, so covering it. 
making sure you've got a whole bunch, give it a good shake and then tap off any of the excess. And then we're just going to heat set it with the heat tool until it turns shiny gold and we're going to be ready to stencil. Here it is all embossed. And again, I love the volume of the pieces we're gonna get from just one sheet. Okay, so on to the stencils. There are six stencils and they have a number in the top left-hand corner. Uh, that's kind of the manufacturer telling you which way they would like you to place them on the uh, cardstock to do your stencil. I'm stenciling with pinkfresh colors today and I have those listed over on my blog for you. I'm also going to be using an assortment of different sizes of blending brushes for today's project. Uh, you need some big ones and some little ones to get into the nooks and crannies. I'm also going to load my paper and my stencil onto a misty sticky mat. I really like working on top of these. Uh, it keeps my work surface nice and flat for me and it's small so I can pick it up and turn it if I want to go in from a different angle. So I'm using some Spellbinder sticky tape just to hold my stencil on for me. I'm just lining up the first one here and it's important to take the extra couple secs and make sure that you line it up properly so that you get a really nice finished product. It's nice and crisp. Okay, so taping that all down, we're going to start with olive, which is the lighter of the two greens and a small blending brush. And we're going to add the color to all of the leaves and stems. And you'll see that I am blotting off my blending brush every time I reload it. That gets rid of that nasty little lump of color that you get when you first <laughs> re-ink your brush. I hate that lump, don't you? So that's an easy way to get rid of it is just uh, stamp it off on a piece of scrap paper before you go to your stencil. And I've got this sped up a little bit, but this really does go quite quickly. Um, we're just getting to the bottom of these first branches and stems. Okay, and then I am going to take this off and we're going to go to stencil number two. And I'm sorry about my camera, it doesn't like all white stuff. And you'll see I stick a little uh, bouquet of colored flowers in there just to give my camera something to look at. It goes a little crazy when it's all white. Okay, so stencil number two is basically adding the color into the big leaves and stems on the bouquet at the top, and we're switching over to evergreen, which is the darker of the two greens. It is a beautiful green. It's probably my favorite green of all of the ink pads that I own. And I'll show you when we do the reveal of uh, this second stencil, just how pretty this is with uh, the highlight of the olive underneath or beside it. So again, these are the bigger pieces on the one at the top. And so I'm laying in a color and kind of basically filling in all of the colors at the top. And then the two big leaves at the bottom, I'm going to go back in and do the flicking technique. And what that does is you start at the base of the leaf and you're going to flick out towards the outer edge. So that adds a whole bunch of color down at the bottom where you actually want the shadow. And then it lightens as it fades out to the tips of the leaves. And this is a tip to easily add contrast and depth to a leaf with your stencil brush without having to do a whole bunch of work. Now, isn't that a pretty color? And it goes so nice with that gold embossing. It's just gorgeous. Okay, moving on, we're going to Coral Reef and we are going to stencil number three. And this is where we're going to start coloring in some of the flowers. And I'm just cleaning my blending brush off because God only knows what color I used last. Again, in a circular motion going both ways, we're going to lightly add the first layer of ink. And there's layers on these flowers. So uh, a suggestion would be to start light and then add a little bit darker. At the end of this video, I find that my are a little bit too light and I do go back and add a little bit more of the color to them. But this is where I like to start because you never know. It's really hard to take away ink. So I left this at regular speed just so you could see how fast you can load these way faster than coloring and you don't need any you know you don't need to be an expert at Copics in order to color these images that's what's nice about having the stencils but if you have the stamp set and you feel like coloring you've also got that option as well so they're very versatile and of course you could change them to any color that you want 
okay, some of these big flowers take a little bit longer to work on. Or I could have switched to a larger brush. But there we go for the first portion. And I got a couple of spots. I missed that little bud there. Okay, that's what it looks like with the first layer done with the pretty leaves. So now we're going to go on to stencil number four. And this is going to add a little bit more color. And this time we're using peach fuzz and passion fruit. Okay, so peach fudge is the lightest color. Obviously, we're going to start that with that one. And then the passion fruit is going to be our center darker color. Again, I'm loading up my brush, stamping it off once onto scrap paper before I hit my art piece. And it's doing a double duty. The stencil does two things, okay? It adds the color to some of the flowers near the top, but it adds the second layer of color to some of the flowers that we've already done at the bottom. So be a little bit careful when you're playing with this. If you're worried about your colors, you can always use some of that uh, Spellbinder sticky tape and mask off the ones that you don't want this color on. There's a couple that are fairly close together. So I'm just going through and adding my color. Sorry, I'm a little bit off camera there. Then I'm switching over to the darker passion fruit. And starting at the top, the first thing I'm doing is I'm adding the center to that great big peony up there. I'm going to add a little bit of color to the base of that flower and that little bud. And I'm staying away from those two yellow ones in the center that I just pointed at. So I'm coming in and now you'll see there's a center going on the right hand flower. And there's a flower I want to protect so I am going to put a little bit of sticky tape over top of that yellow flower. So that I can add the orange to the other flower and to the two little buds and the bottom center flower. Okay, so working my way down, and I think the rest of them are just all the flower centers. So you can just whip along and add the color to them. And this gives you really nice detail and depth of field in your flowers without doing any work at all. No color blending with your Copics or your colored pencils. And I just removed the stencil so that I can show you the progress so far. So we're getting some nice detail in here. That's pretty good considering we're only on stencil number four. Okay, so now we're bringing in number five. And we're going to line this up. And you wanna pick a spot to line up at the top and the bottom. And I have found that the little buds make it really easy to line up. So again, add some tape. This time we're going with some yellows, lemon whip and sweet mustard. And these are gonna be our yellow pot flowers. I'm going with a bigger brush this time just because there's no little tiny spots to get into. So this just adds more color. Uh, you don't have to work as hard when you get a bigger brush because it loads more ink, obviously. Okay, so loading it up, blending, stamping some off, just that would get rid of any color that I had previously. And in a circular motion, I am adding the yellow to the flowers. And in most cases, I go in both directions. Again, you don't want any little white spots showing up in your stencil from only going one direction. And there's a couple of buds to fill in. Okay, so there we are. That's stencil number five. And that added our pop of color and a couple of centers. And stencil number six that we're going to do now also is multi-purpose. And so there's a couple things that you have to watch out for this one as well. The yellow flowers are going to get the center color, which is the sweet mustard that I'm doing right now. And there's also flower centers. So you have to decide ahead of time if you want that color on all of them or if you want to mask some of them off and do a different color. I think I decided on this one to do them all the same color because it's a color that blends with them all. Okay, and just getting in there. And again, I've got a smaller brush because there's lots of details, lots of little tiny spots to get into. 
and I don't want to mess up and start coloring the wrong things. Okay, so that was Coral Reef. My apologies. This is Sweet Mustard. So these are the flower centers of the yellow flowers. So this is adding that second color um, to add the depth to those yellow flowers. Okay, so I'm just going to do a reveal here, taking the stencil off. And voila, look at that. Isn't it pretty? I love how it gives all the detail without doing any work at all, other than just smooshing some ink on there. So I decided at this point, this is where I decide that the background of my very first flowers are too light. So I've gone back to stencil number one and I'm putting it back on again. And I'm going to put a second layer of the lightest color, which I believe was peach fuzz. And I'm using a bigger brush this time so I can cover more territory. But I'm going very lightly. You don't want to overpower it. And if you do overpower it too much, then you're going to have to go back with the highlight uh, stencil, which I think was number four, um, to go back over those center colors because it will bleed them out. Okay, now we're getting a little bit more contrast in our colors, which is nice. It was a little bit too light. And you'll see when you get to the cards at the end of the video that, that it really does pop. Okay, so again, my final reveal, taking off my little sticky tapes. Look at those beauties. And again, one, two, three, four, five, I think six projects. I'm taking my microfiber cloth and I am wiping this all down because there's going to be some ink sitting on top of my gold embossing. And I don't want to transfer that with my fingers to say my sentiment or my card back and mess that up. So I'm using a really new Misty Sticky Mat, so my paper is really stuck down to it. You will find as you use these, they get a little bit less sticky. They still work, but they're not as hard to pull apart. Okay, so once again, I'm lining up my die. So you see that the die works just as well for the washi tape as it does for the stamps, as long as you don't cut the stamps apart. Very important. And again, I'm using my same platform and the same sandwich to die cut these. And this one sheet is giving me six more little bouquets to use for my cards. I love that. It would have taken a whole bunch longer to color all of these individually, piece by piece, with, you know, colored pencils or Copic markers. So it's just a really nice alternative especially if you're going to mass produce a whole bunch of cards like I am today. Okay, I'm not going to put all these cards together individually, but I am going to show you what I used on them. These are all A2 size cards, and this one uses all of the smaller bouquets. The sentiment is from the Die Cut Sentiments number one bundle. I love these. It saves you a whole ton of work. There's a couple of different ones to choose from. And I did the background, all both of them, with the coordinating hot foil plate. So for the very background, I did foil it in the gold. And then I came back and took the card front and placed it on my die cutting uh, platform with an embossing mat. And I embossed it instead of die cutting it. So these things have a dual purpose. You can do all kinds of fun things with them. Here's my embossing mat. You just place it over top of the paper and run it through your die cutting machine and it will emboss it for you. It's beautiful. For card number two, I decided to use the gazebo die as my centerpiece and it's cut in mirror gold foil in the center. Then I added my flowers. My background is again embossed with the geo arch and I added some metallic pearls in gold. Really, really simple card, but really pretty with all the detail and all the texture. Just love it. And these new pearls from Pink Fresh are fabulous. They are so pretty. Do yourself a favor and grab yourself a couple of packs. Card number three, I use the ornate circle and it's cut twice and it provides that beautiful background behind my flowers and then behind that the card base is again 
geo arch embossed background. This is the beautiful ornate circle die. It's awesome. There's two different ways that you can use it. You can also cut it and stack it. You can also cut it in white and gold and inlay some of the gold pieces back in. Did you see? Did you pick up on the fact that I built this card backwards? I put the card front on upside down. Cards four and five are the mini slimline and I use the mini slimline frames for these. There's two frames in there, a large one and a small one, and I've used one on each card. Okay, so for the card on the left, I also used the GeoArch and embossed the background before I added my large slimline frame. Then I tucked in some of the uh, pretty florals that we just created, and I embellished with the Glacier Jewels. The card on the right, I used the smaller of the slimline frames. There's no embossed background um, and that allowed me to heat emboss the sentiment on the card front. Card number six is using some of our stenciled bouquet and I gold foiled the geo arch for the background. Okay then over that I cut a diagonal stitch rectangle frame and added that to my card front before I glued on all of my little uh, bouquets and so I think I used four of the pieces for this one. And the sentiment is the Foiled Sentiments pack number one. Card number seven, I wanted to show you that these also look nice on a colored background. This is a pale blue and I have embossed it with the Lush Vines hot foil plate. So again, I used a uh, embossing instead of uh, heat foiling it, although I do have a sample here of it gold foiled and it is an absolutely beautiful background plate. You'll see that in a future card. Okay, and so I added some of my stenciled images and a sentiment from Foiled Sentiments number one, this pretty little round one, and some gold metallic pearls. Card number eight, I changed up the colors when I did some stenciling. This one was Ocean Breeze, Mermaid Cove, Apricot, and Clementine. And then I die cut the beautiful ornate circle, cut it in half, and did a little bit of blue around it and added that as the background. I hope you enjoyed today's video and card shares. The products used are listed under the video along with a link to my blog for details on each card. Please give me a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. It really does help my YouTube channel. And until next time, toodles!